Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this session of Litfest X with uh, senior journalist, author Manu Joseph. Um, Manu has worn several hats uh, as editor for magazines, newspapers, and uh, has written critically acclaimed books. Um, we're glad to have him uh, for what essentially is going to be a freewheeling conversation between Manu and the audience and uh, myself on the youth and journalism. Um, Manu, great to have you with us. And, uh, uh, you know, it is, it is interesting that we are using one of the new media vehicles, you know, Google Hangouts and uh, YouTube and, of course, Twitter uh, to, to do this festival. Uh, a lot of uh, talk about uh, the use of these uh, platforms and technologies in journalism today, uh, both by uh, existing, uh, you know, old school, uh, you know, publishing houses as well as new emerging platforms. Um, so off the bat, uh, Manu, uh, your uh, sort of opening remarks or views on this. There are uh, two parts to this. One is uh, uh, more people than ever are consuming journalism today. Uh, even though journalism appears to be in some kind of a crisis. Uh, and this crisis is similar to what's happening with what is called literary fiction. More people than ever are reading, but there seems to be some kind of a commercial crisis. We'll come to the commercial crisis later, or maybe we will address it at all. Now, what's happening is that the uh, compared to say 10 or 15 years ago, the youth today is very interested in news, uh, which uh, it's very easy to overlook that point because it seems to be a very unremarkable fact. But when I was say 20 or 21, the people around me, they were not so interested in the news. They were not so interested in the Republic. Uh, today, the Republic is not a down market idea. People. Um, want to know what's going on. They want to know about the economics. They want to know about social issues. They're concerned with everything. I think that's chiefly because uh, uh, with, with the larger middle class, uh, there is a higher stake in the nation today. The idea that you can one day fly away is probably still there, but the sense of home and that home matters uh, is much higher today. As a result, there is a greater stake in the nation. Uh, so, and, and that is always good for journalism. When people have a higher stake in something, they then uh, they, 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 they are interested in journalism too. So, which I, I think that is significant. So, I'm, so that is the audience. And, uh, and then what's happening is that, but as, as we know, this is also an audience unlike before. Uh, it, ha it has, it's a high bias audience. They have already made up their mind. And today, if you have a point of view, you will find a corroboration. That's what the new media has done. That's what it is largely about. Uh, you will find evidence to your beliefs and you will find your own crowd who's mouthing the same things. So it's a highly biased audience. It's fragmented. It's polarized, and uh, they get the information uh, and the corroboration uh, that they need and they uh, that they look for. So today, it's I, I think it, it is quite a challenge to be a truly balanced uh, and reputable outlet of journalism. So uh, I don't think human beings can be objective, but journalism can be. In fact, that is the challenge. So, can you elaborate a little more on the last part where you said that human beings, you know, cannot be objective, but well, they can be because people have uh, their views and uh, they uh, have the reading list and they have their upbringing and uh, they are witnesses. Uh, to uh, to things which shape their opinions. Uh, any thinking human being uh, will not be able to 
look at the situation and say that now I'm going to be extremely objective about it. That is the job uh, of journalism. Uh, when it's reportage, chief, obviously. Um, but today, uh, increasingly, the way I see, especially the new media, I feel that fragments of journalism are as, are as political as politics itself. Uh, maybe there is a market for it. I can see the aesthetic and the commercial and the intellectual need to do that. Uh, but I think journalism is more fun when you can really confuse your audience. What I mean is that they should never be able to predict uh, what you're going to come up with. You know? um, just as in literary fiction, I think journalism is best when it's unpredictable. When people feel that you don't have a slant, you know, that's the greatest compliment anybody can give you. So, you know, uh, if, if for a moment if we say that, yes, the, uh, you know, the youth are consuming more of news or, you know, content on current affairs, etc. Uh, what about the other side where the youth are also contributing to uh, capturing, relaying, generating news, you know, uh, as it happens? You know, from their mobile phones, you know, WhatsApping things about incidents that have happened, or on Twitter, so on and so forth. Do you then see a lot of this power which has come into the hands of the youth? And like you mentioned, they they may or may not be objective, uh, objectively using that power. See, I uh, I have something very unpopular to say. I I mean, I see a clear distinction between life and journalism. People reporting what they are seeing, that is just people saying stuff. But that that doesn't make it journalism. Uh, I, I've never I've never been a fan of citizen journalism. If Steve Jobs didn't want inputs on how to make a half decent phone, I don't think uh, a competent editor needs uh, inputs on how, how to uh, create a newspaper. That's what journalists are for. Uh, so, uh, uh, if journalism can be influenced by, say, Twitter feed and what people are talking about and uh, what is of interest to them, and of course, uh, there have been news breaks on the new media which. Uh, Conventional mainstream media has picked up, uh, but uh, as a form, as a profession, uh, I, the mainstream journalism is significantly different from what is called citizen journalism. There is a form of activism uh, which benefits a lot and which has been transformed by what is, in fact, that should not be called citizen journalism, that should be called citizen activism. It sounds clumsy. So well, there should be no confusion. Very, very uh, valid and interesting point. I, I agree with you, Manu. Because uh, so what you're saying is, you know, just the live or just the currency of the news and, uh, you know, dissemination of it uh, using whatever technology is not simple journalism. You know, like you mentioned, it's activism and which is which I agree is required, but is not is not journalism by itself. Yes, see, there is a moment when uh, rumor becomes news. You know, there is a moment when rumor becomes true. Uh, so that process is what uh, uh, one part of journalism is about. And a lot goes into that process. People don't realize that. No, I should say that nowadays there are, there's a lot of news which is supposed to be generated by professionals which, uh, which don't measure up to the quality of what you would call citizen journalism. That's a different matter. But in theory, the way it should be, journalism is uh, it's very different from citizen activism. Let's let's try to promote this uh, usage, citizen activism, not journalism. Right, right. You know, in in terms of uh, uh, youth movements, you know, since you mentioned at the beginning of the conversation that youth are consuming more news and there's an interest 
in the idea of the republic there's an interest in the idea of the nation you know and the youth feeling part of it and having more ownership or more of a stake in it uh what are some of the key uh, sort of movements or incidents do you think that uh, led to this increased uh, you know feeling of stakeholdership amongst the youth see it is uh, one one property of the youth is that they are actually uh, very afraid because they feel that their entire life is ahead of them uh, first of all they they have a higher stake in life as naive as this might sound than the older people and uh, they uh, because of their inexperience they uh, they are very worried about how they will turn out uh, so this to me is an under reported but it greatly contributes to how they begin to react to the things around them uh, now the so called anti corruption movement when, when anna hazare came to delhi and sat uh, on a death fast uh, immediately in a, a few hours i i try to explain that see this is not what Uh, you think it is? This is this is not about anti-corruption and other things. There are a lot of other things that are going on. At that time, it was a when I, I was uh, in fact, I, I I think that article would still record all the abuses I received at that point uh, because people were so enamored by this man. Uh, at that time, nobody would have even imagined that Anandar was probably the big game of BJP. Uh, it seemed like an apolitical movement at that time. I was able to open an hour stand. Was look, if you want to transform the country, you can only do it through politics. If you're going to stand outside politics and say politics is filthy, then you're not making much sense. In fact, once we put uh, Anna's caps and I'm Anna, and we call them nonsense. We actually wanted to call call it bullshit, but then we kind of thought it was temporary. Now. so uh, but but what what is important is that it was uh, uh, it, it was a, a youth led movement in the center of course television channels had their uh, uh, part to play but the youth were really moved uh, by the symbolism of amon sare and the idea of anti corruption and uh, nobody seemed to stop and think that see when when uh, your papa is selling uh, Flat or buying a flat, there is uh, something called the white component and the black component. So the idea of corruption is a household thing, but where but the youth were able to project uh, an idealistic, moralistic idea of corruption as big corruption, which uh, is a creation of politician, and the small corruption, which is just an enemy of that. Uh, so that hypocritical, idealistic. uh distinction that's possible only for youth movement you know uh, only they have the exuberance to carry uh, this kind of duality and uh, and uh, make it spread make it go viral talking of, so they are uh, uh they are the people journalism uh, wants to move you know because they are the ones who respond so strongly uh to journalism um uh, but a significant uh, but where, where youth movement really uh, came into its own was uh, uh, after the uh, uh, horrible delhi raid you know and uh, i would credit the anna hazare movement for training uh, a generation uh, to know how to conduct a successful street protest There was a time not long ago, you know, we only knew Palestinians uh, as people who know how to throw stones. Uh, an Indian of a certain background would not be on the street, and most Indian demonstrations, if you see, people are always laughing and waving to the camera, you know. Uh, but but everything has changed over the last five years, where uh, the modern Indian youth. is uh, capable of demonstrating on the streets right you know um, 
something very interesting you touched upon, which is you know the ability of the youth uh, to use their exuberance and energy, and you know if I can also say passion uh, for the right cause or for the right movement, which of course they believe is right. And uh, so if we were to you know keep that at one end and the other end, uh, you know you talk about uh, journalism. Uh, where do you see the uh, uh, sort of connect happening? Do you think that uh, with these qualities and with access to better technology, you know, digital, social, uh, all of these put together, do you think we have a, a, a better future ahead for uh, again getting a, a wonderful era in journalism with the current youth? I, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm, 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 uh, uh, I'm an optimist. You know, uh, to the point that my optimism is some kind of a psychosis. I'm sure um, there is something fundamental about journalism. The idea of journalism, which is going to, which works very well for the youth and the modern times, which is that journalism is primarily a moral profession. Uh, there is no other uh, corporate run profession where, despite everything you can say about uh, Indian journalism, but still ethics and morality does matter. People would sit around and they would still uh, talk about ethics and morality, and so they are not but they are not just mouthing these things. They may not be able to. Uh, match their own aspirations or the expectations of the profession all the time because people tend to be practical. But even in India, uh, journalists know that what they have uh, in the form of credibility is, is through ethics and, and that it is fundamentally a modern profession. And they try to be actually most of the time. Sometimes they slip, of course. Uh, now that is what gives journalism its power in, in modern times. Because the youth, uh, they might be practical here and there for their own good, but then when they talk about the nation, uh, they are very idealistic and modernist. Like for example, nobody in a corporate situation is going to protest against the HR, against, say, dress codes and other things, right? But they will protest against the prime minister. So, so they, it is not that they are, they are protesters uh, throughout the life. You know, they, they, they consider a few things are given, but then they expect, uh, when it comes to social issues, politics, uh, they become very moralistic. Uh, so there is a good connect between journalism, the idea of journalism, and the way we, uh, young people are. Uh, and also today we are, uh, we are moving towards a society where there are few winners and many losers. Uh, so in a, in a situation like that, the underdog, the underdog is always searching for an idea of justice uh, and uh, a reason why he failed or he's not as successful as the 1%. And journalism is always delivering hints as to why he may have failed. Uh, the larger, glorious, grand pieces that are keeping him down. So, uh, so I, uh, so journalism is going to be extremely powerful. It's just that the profession should now try to find out how to make a, a, a reasonable business out of it. I don't like the idea of journalism as actors. I don't want. Uh, as, as I said, some of my JNU friends won't like it. I don't want JNU to run journalism. Uh, I, I feel that, in fact, sometimes I feel that uh, just like there has to be a huge, strong wall between uh, journalism and the corporate interests, there has to be a wall which is as big and as strong between journalism and activism. Uh, but right now, because activists are so well informed, Fact, an active activist is better informed than a journalist. The activists are able to wag journalism. They're able to use journalism very well. But I don't think that's in the best interest of journalism. I 
feel that there has to be some kind of a context. You have to start questioning activism and activist truth. Right. But I feel as a model, it has to, it has to be an enterprise. Uh, it has to be a commercial enterprise. It doesn't mean you have to be corrupt. Uh, and the currency that work is sometimes so is credibility, ethics, and everything that is good. Right. Uh, it's time also now, Manu, to take in a few questions uh, from our online audience. Uh, you know, we've got quite a few coming in. I'm just going to take one or two uh, since we are almost at the end of the session. Um, so the first one here is uh, from Ronak, and I'm reading out the question. Uh, it says, I think youth is empowering journalism. Concepts like citizen journalists support the case. What's your take? Yeah, we've already covered the uh, citizen journalism. Yeah, but in, in terms of the youth empowering journalism, uh, you know, do you have some words of advice for Ronak or you know others who might have similar? As a journalist or as a reader, uh, what is the? Uh... He's not clarified, but let's assume as a journalist. Oh, it's it, it's a great time to be. Uh... It's a great and, and, and kind of terrifying time to be young and to be a journalist right now. Uh, I could write a whole book about that because, uh, see, what, one thing is when, when about 20 years ago, a 20 year old journalist, a 21, 22 year old journalist would have believed, thought, believed that he is going to be in a profession which is going to be the same for the next 50 years. But today, a journalist who's 21 or 22 knows, I mean, he's not very really sure that journalism is going to be the same after five years, or whether he even wants to be a, uh, wants to remain a journalist beyond five years. Uh, I'm not able to, I, I won't be able to comprehend that kind of uh, fluidity you know, in, uh, in a young person right now. It must be, it must be odd, it must be terrifying. You know? um, but at the same time, uh, you are read like never before. It's a great, uh, of course, the other problem is that there are, the way social media works, I mean, there are only compliments all the time. And in fact, Facebook is reluctant to add a dislike button because of the so that's the nature of the society. Everybody has become so fragile that people want to hear good things all the time and they get good things all the time. And it is so corrupting and destructive for young writers. And especially most, see, most copyrights, very nature is shit, you know. And, but people are not given an opportunity to realize that. And people are always hearing fantastic things about what they are doing. So I think for young writers who are very serious about writing, it could be very destructive because there's nothing more destructive than compliments, especially when you're young. Uh, so I think we have to really uh, uh, find the wisdom to manage these many things. But I think they're in very exciting times. And uh, I hope, uh, at least I tried to do but I couldn't. Uh, uh, I hope that there are enough uh, senior journalists who come together and take uh, very credible products, which are also commercially separate. Right, right. Now that's some uh, really interesting uh, views there, Manu. And uh, certainly, uh, I'm sure the viewers of the uh, you know session will take back uh, some good advice uh, from you. Uh, you know, both journalists as well as uh, you know uh, readers. Um, on on a parting note, I wanted to ask you if you have a, a, a quote or a view on on Litfest X, you know, the initiative and the platform. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's uh, nice and weird. You know, I've never been a part of something like this where I'm actually wearing shorts and uh, talking to a, a vast, or hopefully a vast audience. Uh, so I, I I I hope that you continue, and uh, it might be a good idea to do this two or three times uh, uh, a year. 
Uh, I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. That that is part of the plan, and uh, I'm glad you said that. Uh, and we certainly, you know, continue this discussion with you offline as well. Um, but uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us, Manu. And um, you know, we look we look forward to uh, you know uh, future interactions with you in future editions of the festival. Great. It was good to be in conversation. Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye.